Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video we are going to make a dog bed and it will be a dog cave. So that is a, a dog bed with a, a blanket attached to it where the dog can crawl under. And uh, Nola, the dog that, that we have now, is my sixth dog, but is the first dog that likes to sleep underneath a blanket. So um, we always tuck her in with her blanket and stuff. But I think it would be nice if she could, could, could be able to crawl under by herself so that we don't have to do it. I don't know if she will, but I thought it was nice to try and make uh, such a dog bed because they look very nice and I think they're very comfortable. Uh, and I will be using uh, almost only um, materials that I already have in my house. The only thing that I bought was the blanket that goes on top. Uh, I bought that because I wanted that to be a really nice one. But the rest I already had in house and recycled. And some are really old but uh, very useful still. Uh, and if you're waiting for me to do make what you see in the shops, the women's garments, don't worry. Next year I will uh, start again with all those... Uh, garments uh, and I already have uh, some plants. I already have the uh, fabrics laying down so I will start that again but for now I have also some other things that I wanted to make and because I have very little time I just thought well I will also just video it and I put it on YouTube so that's why you had quite some videos not women garments related but I will be back in the next year with, uh, with those uh, pieces and they will be very nice ones. So I hope you like this video too and I'll show you what you need and how we're going to make it. So what we'll need is even too big for the frame, uh, some foam. And uh, for this video I almost, all the material that I use are recycled. So this foam looks rather dirty, it's uh, from an old uh, sun chair cushion. But I have sanitized it with my steamer so it has some stains because it has been outside in the weather. But it is very, uh, really clean now. Uh, and I measured how big I want my um, bed to be and that's a bit depending on what kind of dog you have, how large your dog is and also how your dog sleeps. If you have a dog that curls up in a ball you don't need that much of space. When you have a dog that uh, always sleeps spread out then you need a bigger uh, dog bed. So I put my tripod a little bit higher to give you a better overview. So we have our circle of foam that is 150 uh, diameter. We have one part of fleece here already underneath for the bottom of the cover. Same uh, measurement, same uh, shape as the foam. Then we have our old duvet cover piece that goes on top of the foam. Also same measurements only I made it a little bit wider that it can go over the edges. And then again one piece of fleece for the top part of the cover where the cave part will go over it. And you have a better view what it looks like uh, in shape. or what I will do is I will put on the bottom part of the um, cover so what is underneath the phone what is going onto the floor I will put something on this and this is an anti-slip I, I don't know what it's called it's a bit of rubbery but you can put that underneath your works so that your works don't slip and slide when you uh, walk over it and I will sew that I hope I can sew it just on top of the, the middle of the bottom piece of the cover. If you cannot sew it, you can also just glue it, but I always like to sew more than glue. Then what I have is I have some um, uh, Velcro that you can tape onto your um, pieces. So it's not uh, sewing on, but it, it has it's, it's this adhesive when you take the um, paper off. And I will put that between the foam and the duvet so that the duvet is a bit of attached to the foam uh, so that you can take it off if you want to wash it but that it won't slip and slide over your foam. That is just a, a bit of attached to each other. Um, and then of course we need the fabric that makes the cave. 
and that's the only thing that I bought that I didn't have at hand uh, and that is this really cute fleece fabric with those dog paws and I really like this one it's very sweet and warm and soft I put it double so it's doubled up and I haven't cut it because I just want to see when I'm making it uh, how I will attach it but uh, I measured the um, amount of fleece that I needed because I want you see this is almost laying like the foam I want the where the dog must go in or underneath the um, blanket I want it to be a bit open because so I will not uh, attach it on the beginning or in the middle but just a little, little bit in between make sure that it will stay a little bit open I will make here a casing where I will insert some horse hair and maybe you don't know what horse hair is it's very stiff uh, material that you can use in your hemline of a skirt or dress so stiff and when you uh, put that into a casing here on your fleece it will be also a little bit more stiff so it will not fall flat down we're gonna start with the rim and uh, I put some interfacing um, I ironed it on onto the two larger pieces of the rim uh, it is a stretchy interfacing but it gives a little bit more grip to the fabric and that's why I hope it will be more nicely standing up uh, in the onto the uh, foam so I'm gonna sew the pieces right sides together onto the, the zipper band and we're gonna do that like this for this part just sew that on and then you can flip it back and top stitch it of course you can also do that just in one row if you want to just sew it like this and then you sew that towards the uh, teeth and for the other side I'll take this off first you sew that on like this again right sides together so the right side facing down then you flip that to that side but then you cover the uh, zipper teeth with your fabric so that you don't see the zipper so that the zipper teeth are uh, protected by the fabric like that our top circle and the rim is nicely round you close that up so that you have the whole rim like this 
Um, but before we're gonna attach it, we're gonna work on the uh, cave part that will be on top of this and in between these two. So, uh, well, where I will start with is you fold your uh, blankets together, that you have your opening here to the side. Here is the fold, and this will be uh, this side will be where the um, other side of the uh, foam will be. So this is the front, this is the back, and these are the sides that we have to cut in shape. But first we're going to insert the um, horse hair here in between the two layers of the blanket. And that means I will put it uh, in between and then sew a casing here just on the edge of the horse hair so that we get a little bit of structure here on the side of the blanket. that rectangular fabric with the paws onto my circle and I already pinned it down because I had just to figure out how to do it because what I wanted I wanted some room for the opening so that Nola can, could get in very easily I put the uh, horse hair in the uh, casing here so this has a little bit more structure um, and I made the opening also not just flat on because then she certainly will not get underneath it but it's a little bit more white. Uh, and then I also wanted here on the whole um, duck bed some room because Nola is a mid-sized dog. She weighs uh, 25 kilos. So she must have some room underneath the blanket otherwise it will be too tight. So I cannot just put the fabric just flat and sew it on. That will not work. Uh, when you have a small dog I don't think you have really that much of a problem where you have a stretchy, stretchy fabric like a fleece or a jersey or something but with a medium size or a big dog you will certainly a large dog you will certainly need some room underneath your um, uh, fleece or underneath your top uh, deck so what I did um, I made some pleats into the fabric a little, little bit flat more flat than you can see I think I made pleats here around the uh, circumference of the circle uh, with the uh, white fabric uh, going to the middle. So I made a pleat here, I made a pleat here, I made a pleat here and here. And I made them around 13-14 uh, centimeters apart um, uh, and 4 centimeters uh, deep. So it's more like a star going to the middle. So that's, I tried it with a pillow underneath how that looks. It gets, gives uh, more room here underneath your blanket and for a medium to large dog you really need that. Um, so when it's flat it doesn't look that nice but uh, I tried different things with that. It's really too tight and I'm sure Nora will not get underneath it when it's too tight when she has, has to go under. She likes it when I tuck her in but I think when it's too tight she will just not go underneath. So then the whole trick is, <laughs> is not good. Uh, so I did it like this. I pinned it down. But now I worry that I think my sewing machine will not like this because I downsized to a more basic sewing machine. It works very well, but here on the pleats I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of fleece. So that is really a lot. Uh, so I hope my sewing machine will take this, otherwise I have to figure out how to do it. Uh, what I will do first, just sew on the um, white fabric onto the circle. And then I also have to add the eight layer that is doing because that has also go on top of this and then flip it over. So I really hope it will work out because I don't want to hand stitch this.
so proud of my machine. It just did it and I hadn't expected it. It was no problem. So that is the... Um, that shows that you don't need a very expensive, very exclusive sewing machine. I have just a basic one and it just sewed it all. So I hope now the rim is not too much for it, but I was very happy with this. So what I'm going to do now is clean up the edges, like here I have the um, horse hair sticking out. Make sure that all the uh, seam allowances are nice and clean. Maybe I didn't sew it up nicely so i'll just cut it that it's nice and even and then i will pin on my um, rim i put the zipper part to the back i always have to see how i should do it yeah like this uh, i will put the mid of the zipper to the mid back of the cover and then i will line it up just all the way around and pin it here to the seam allowance that we just sewn and then you have nicely your rim attached to and so i clipped the rim all around the circle uh, before that i cut off my seam allowance of the parts that i sewed before was small so i made it just two to three millimeters millimeters of uh, seam allowance uh, so that for sure when I sew the rim on that I also want to give a small seam allowance uh, you don't see the stitching when we stitch this so this will be inside of that stitching we did previously so now we're going to sew on the rim all around and when you um, pin it on make sure that you pin it that your um, the overlap of your zipper is going down to the bottom of the uh, of the cushion dog bed and uh, I marked here on the bottom circle where the middle is of course it doesn't have to be exact it is just um, for making it slip free with this um, and I will pin it all around and then I hope I can sew it on if I cannot then I will just glue it on but sewing of course is way more easy to do so sewing machine didn't like that at all you see i have a very uneven zigzag even uh, after i uh, put on my uh, leather presser foot but it doesn't matter it's just the bottom of your uh, dog bed so no one will see it i will clip this circle to the rest again white sides together so this will be the outside with that uh, non-slip thing so make sure it is white white side down and then clip it all the way around to the rim and make sure you open up your zipper otherwise you cannot flip it right side out afterwards so so bottom circle pin to the other side of the rim so not to where you just sewed all the other uh, pieces of the fabric just the other end of your rim and sew that all around Now 
flip the cover right side out. So, and then the only thing we have to do is glue our um, duvet to the foam and I use this adhesive velcro. I hope it will really stick to the foam and to the duvet otherwise I will use some um, fabric glue to glue it on. So I'm just gonna stick one here where the two pieces are attached to reinforce it a bit. Another one here, another one there. And then I take off the um, paper from the other sides and then I just lay my duvet on top of it. And just press it on a bit so that it is nicely attached. Of course it doesn't really have to but then it will stay more nicely put into your cover. And then the most difficult part is putting this whole thing into your cover. your duck cave is done that's nice and warm inside i hope nola will like it uh, but really for me the most difficult thing was putting the foam inside the cover because i'm really not good at fiddling with that and the uh, fleece sticks to the foam so it was very difficult to get it in but it works when you do it upside down when you put it in like this you can put this flat part very easily to the corners to the outside of your uh, foam and that is easier than when you try to do it but i was starting with from this side because that doesn't really work but it looks very nice it's nice and comfy it has a nice warm blanket so we'll see how she likes it so i put a treat underneath the blanket to encourage her to get under it but she didn't really understand what was this thing now so eventually she just sat on top of it uh, so I hold, hold it up and then she got under it and um, I think then she felt, okay, this feels nice, I will just lay down. And you see her tail wagging there underneath the blanket, so uh, she really liked it. And I noticed that she especially liked the bottom, so the foam uh, part of it, because she has very soft cushions everywhere in the house and this is rather firm. And I know that she really liked that because when she was laying down, she didn't even get up. And when she felt asleep, she just slept on and she really, really liked it. And still the day after now, she hasn't got the hang of it, how she can crawl underneath it herself. But when you hold it up, she goes under and she just falls asleep immediately. So I think this is a success.